speaker is Frank Luis G. Bowen. He is going to speak from his strategic relationship, level five, project six. Prepare to speak professionally. The speaker will share his story with the title Q in leadership. His speech will be evaluated by Ray Rivero. I invite Ray to please read out the objectives of the speech. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster today. I have the pleasure of introducing Francois Bowen, presenting from Strategic Relationships, the Level 5 elective, prepared to speak professionally. Her speech title is The Q in Leadership. Her dream goal is to speak on the world stage, both virtually and in person. After she publishes her first book and any books after that, sharing her values and her faith on her real life victories to help others to come out of the hole they are in and be themselves in the creator of this beautiful world we all live in. The purpose of this project is for the member to practice developing and presenting a longer speech beyond our five to seven minute time frame. So let's sit back and enjoy Francois' speech. Thank you, Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcoming Frank Press one on you. All right. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me and can you see me? Yes. Yeah, clear. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and special guests, welcome to Leadership Speak. No, welcome to my show. My name is Francoise Bowen, and I am so delighted to share with you for the first time, speaking a lengthy speech about something that is dear to me. And not only it is dear to me, but also something that is dear to every leader in this meeting right now. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth is the Q in leadership? The Q in leadership? That don't make no sense. How is leadership spelled? L-E-A-D-E-R-S-H-I-P. Where is the Q fall into this? Yeah, you're wondering, right? So take a sit, relax, and I'm going to show you where the Q is in leadership. I want to start off with something that concerning the definition of leadership. And we hear from Google, the definition of leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. That's how the Oxford Dictionary defines leadership. In simple words, leadership is about taking risks and challenging the status quo. Leaders motivate others to achieve something new and better. And I'm gonna talk about another definition of leadership. This is now from the Miriam Webster. Leadership, as it says here, is a noun. The office or position of a leader, capacity to lead, the act or an instance of leading. Okay, so we have already looked on two definitions of leadership thus far. Let's go on. Then there is a third definition of leadership. And this is from John C. Maxwell. He is an American author, speaker, pastor, who has written 21 books primarily focusing on leadership. And for those of you who love anything leadership, I'm so sure you have heard about John C. Maxwell. You have heard about Jim Rohn, Success Magazine, 
and the list go on and on. And he is one of these num one of the number one sought after leadership guru. And his definition of leadership says, it is the ability to obtain followers. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. The greatest leadership is by example. You must do, act, say, and be the person you want your team to be. Leadership is a visual thing. You cannot take others on a journey with an unknown destination. And we have our leader, which is Brahma Mohan, who has stated a lot and shown his vision for leadership speak and for our lives. So, so far, we're going well, right? All right. Next definition of what leadership means from another wonderful person. Yes, me, yours truly. <laughs> and, and my definition of leadership is a person who is humble, that willingly pushes against the forces of doing the same thing that gave same results in times past. Their vision, character, and life is an eagle view. Oh, yes. I believe that when you're in a leadership position, you are an eagle. And I'm going to give the final definition of leadership. So I hope everybody is writing down, taking notes and like, aha, uh -huh. oh, okay, all right. Now I'm getting on to understand more about leadership. Okay, so I have the last definition of leadership. And this definition comes from none other than the Bible, which I read. And it is stated in 1 Peter chapter 5, the definition of a leader. It is be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. So I think we have gathered the definition of leadership from different perspectives. And it clearly means that we all in this room right now must ensure that as the leaders, that we must be humble, risk takers, and ensuring that we are visionaries to lead the team ahead. Now I have some interesting things for all of us to participate in. Leadership requires faith and belief in yourself and the people around you. So I'm gonna ask persons in this room, how many of you just raise your emoji hand or raise your hand, we all on camera. How many of you believe in yourself and the people that you have around you? How many of you? Raise your hand. All right. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it is really needed for us to do that. So here's a question. And to you, I'm gonna stop share my sheet, my screen just to get much more in depth with you. Here's a question to you, the audience. Why is it important to take risks? And when should that happen in your leadership stage? Why is it important to take risks? And when should that happen in your leadership stage? I'm gonna stop share so that I can see the person who are answering that question. All right, so I see Dr. Aswathi, your hand is raised. What is your response to that question? No, I think yeah. I raised it before when you asked, oh, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you ask? What wonderful Did you ask? presentation, I just loved it. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So then since you're on, would you like to just give a shot at it? Yeah, I'll, I'll come up with something. You can carry on maybe with someone else. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have anyone who wants to? All right. I see Sudarshan. Toastmaster Sudarshan, go right ahead. Yeah. So in any journey, unless you choosing to break the egg, there is no omelet to be made. So if you aren't willing to take the risk, let alone being a leader, you aren't even qualified to walk on the path. So it is, I think, two sides of the same coin. Leadership and risk taking have to go together. Else there isn't a leader. Exactly, exactly. That is so true. Because if why then do you take yourself to be in a leadership position if you don't wish to be take the you know, you are so correct. Okay, I see two participant hands raised. I see another hand raised. And uh, let me see whose hand is that. I saw a hand. That is great. I think. Okay, Brom, Brom, yeah, go right ahead. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. And the question, the question is, why is it important to take risk, and when should that happen in your leadership stage? Well, thank you very much for that question. That's an amazing question. Uh, if the sergeant at arms can mute people who are not uh, talking. Uh, now, leadership is all about risks because what's happening is that, especially in these uncertain times, when there's uncertainty and we need to sort of work with uncertainty, there's always risk involved because you're stepping into the unknown and the unknown brings with it risk. Uncertainty and risk go together. And, and as we know, especially in Toastmasters world where it's amplified and everywhere else too, that people are not willing to take the risk and do something different. They're not willing to, as Nurul said, we at Leadership Speak, we are learning the new platform. We've learned the new platform, Zoom. We've mastered it. We're bringing leadership to Zoom and we are succeeding like no other club has been succeeding because we know and understand to take the risk to be different and and to stick our neck out actually at the same time because that is what leaders do in times of uncertainty ambiguity volatility and so on so back exactly. to you. thank you so much brom for that and you hit it as well too and i see rosie rosie dinesh and mohammed so rosie you go first you're muted Am I? Okay, go right ahead. I believe it's important for leaders to take risks because often in life, there isn't an immediate and a straight answer. And if leaders sit on the fence, and that means they'll never be here nor there, it's unlikely to, for them to succeed with their team. So leaders must be decisive. And sometimes that risk may refer to taking decisions that are wrong but then leaders are quick to adjust, to adapt, and then move forward and learn and lead again. So risk-taking is essential and is part and parcel of being a leader. Back to you. Thank you so much, Rosie. That is so true because you can't be undecided. You must be firm. This is a way forward. You just nail it again in the, on the head. Dinesh, go right ahead. Perfect. That's the beautiful question, uh, Francois, that you asked. My thought on this is leaders pave the unpaved way. What does that mean is leaders set the direction, like Brahman said, or like others said. Having the Zoom meetings when COVID happened was, was the part of the leadership moving from in person to zoom meetings but then there is a second part of it too and the second part of it is consistency is what the leadership requires so mm -hmm. yes the leaders take the risk of paving the unpaved wave of moving from um, in person meeting to the zoom meeting mm -hmm. but then still remaining consistent and taking it to the next level. This leadership club 
is a perfect example of bringing in the uh, leaders from across the world in a Zoom meeting. Had COVID not happened, I don't think Leadership Club, C Club would have existed because earlier people were sticking to their own local areas and all that stuff. So I always say this to everybody that yes, COVID presented many, 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 many challenges to the humanity, but it opened up many opportunities also to bring the humanity, to bring the, the global leaders in spite of their differences under one platform. Back to you, Ansoa. Thank you so much, Dinesh. And you reminded me of a book um, from Jeff Olsen, which is called The Slight Edge. And in that book, he said that the, you travel the road less trodden on, and that makes all the difference. And we saw throughout the COVID, a lot of companies as well had to adapt quickly, quickly of letting the employees to be able to work from home. And now that we are, as I say, post COVID, there are some companies who still maintain that. And then there are some companies that say, no, you need to come back in the office and work. So you're right, trotting the way, making a new path for others to go forward on. Mama, okay, Asif, uh, Mohammed, Asif, <laughs> you, and then Baran, and then last will be Dr. Aswati. <laughs> well, risk simply means that you know things go, uh, you know, don't go according to our uh, vision, what we require. So it may be good. Uh, good things may not happen the way we wanted to. But you see, the ships are not meant to be into the safe harbor. You know, they are meant to be going out into the sea, right? So that's where how the world is. Like, you know, world, there's a lot of uncertainties. And in the current times, I mean, things are moving so fast. I mean, they are so volatile. And uh, that's where it requires for a leader to take decisions more quickly. Yeah. So it's required, the leaders need to be agile. So if a reserve, uh, leader needs to be agile, it's just like, like you know, not taking any kind of a risk. It's known as a calculated risk you take, right? So when you take a risk, a leader needs to accumulate enough data as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Right. And should have a kind of a knowledge across, uh, uh, you know, many of those, uh, 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 across uh, the geography, I could call it as like, you know, not geography as well as, uh, let's say finance, uh, let's say the geopolitics, across disciplines. And that is where a leader needs to read a lot. So hence, when you take calculated risk, things might go wrong or right. But if you don't take your action, then there's sure shot, you know, I mean, you're not going to get any kind of a result at all, correct? So when you take action, there will be a result. Either it will be passed or failed. But if you don't take any action, then there's no result. So that's where leaders need to take risk. And this happens throughout the whole of the journey. There is no particular stage. Like, you know, when you're a startup leader or an accomplished leader, right. it is pervasive. It is pervasive throughout your leadership life. Correct. Correct. And leaders and take responsibility of their decisions. Exactly. And exactly. More importantly is that when they take decisions, something goes wrong, you quickly recover from your uh, mistakes or things which went wrong. And that's called as resilience. So leaders build resilience and that's why they take risks right. for more success. Exactly, exactly. And there's something that you said about reading. Now, I'm going to tell you about me. Ever since I know myself, I never like reading romantic books up to this day. I don't get the gist. I don't know how people, I, I've seen my best friend, they love these romantic books. I never, I was more drawn towards the leadership, things that take you forward. Because I've seen the difference. When you read quality books, you know how to take the calculated risk. But when you're a person that likes to just focus reading only on um, these lovers book, um, romance book and comedy, just reading these consistently over and over, you live in fear and trying to figure out how do I make this step? How do I go forward? So you made a good valid point as well in your response. Okay, Baran and then Dr. Aswasi. Thank you so much. That was an incredible question and I'm going to keep my reply. Good 
great leaders possible. And part of the, our other people who, who follow us, and we have to share that vision with them. But how do you know what is impossible and what is possible? It means you have to first push against limits. The human spirit is amazing. You can never know what you're capable of entirely at any one point. The more you, you climb, the more there is to be climbed. So that is just it. For me, I believe why risk-taking is important to leadership and leadership to risk-taking is you will never know your limits until you push against them. That is it. Back to you. All right. And then last, finally, Dr. Swati. Francis, can I take half a second, please? Sure. Okay. We have all heard the term, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. Has anybody never heard about it? Higher the risk is higher the reward. I've spent 35 years in financial advisor. I'm a retired financial coach. And when the COVID hit, I was the president of, the, of my club in Markham. And believe you me, in 15 minutes time, we made the transition. When I sat down with my VP education, I had no knowledge about IT. He had all the knowledge and he went full blank full blast and we had before March we had 21 members in the club and today we're the best club in the area thank you all right all right thank you so much I just realized I'm on green wow we're really having a good time here <laughs> we're having a good good time here okay so I'm going to Dr. Swati I'm going to make you give your yours and then I'm going to go right to uh to complete my presentation yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I do completely agree that leaders need to take risk because I feel leader uh, is a person who will set goals and those goals should be out of reach. Of course, not out of sight, but out of reach because when something is out of reach, you will definitely try to uh, strive harder to achieve that. And when you do so, uh, you will try to come out of your comfort zone. And it is always said that growth is when you step out of your comfort zone. So it is not only for the leader to grow, but of course, when team members, they take re that risk, that challenge to reach to that goal, which is actually out of reach. Definitely, they are stepping out of their comfort zone and they are as... Uh, uh, the previous uh, speaker, uh, Nazim, he said that, of course, the reward is higher when you are stepping out of your comfort zone. So definitely risk is worth taking when you are a leader uh, yep. of your team. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Now, every, every response to my question leads to what is the cue in leadership? What is the cue in leadership? The responses gave the definition of the cue and you didn't even realize that. The cue in leadership is very simple. And uh, it is this. The cue in leadership is living outside the box and the fishbowl, setting yourself and the other person free to live above the norm. How is the cue formed? The creative leader receives a crossing bar, places it on the circle by making an opening for the person in the circle to come out. We all know how the letter Q is. We see it right there. That is free from the trap of mediocrity and fear. And uh, the thing about it's this, too many leaders, small and great, who are not eagle visionaries, prefer to live by the code. If it's not broken, why fix it? They rather use the crossbar they receive to enlarge the circle, turn the circle into a box, and then turn it into a nonagon, then turn the nonagon into a star and stand amazed by saying, ah, beauty in the eyes of the beholder. No, 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 no. You are still inside the box. The business, the employee, the service management, the directors, the team, everyone is still inside of the box, trapped. You have not come outside of the box, period. So I want to conclude 
ensuring a personal, uh, uh, I should say a personal thought for me. Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, the owner of, the, of Apple, he wanted the manager of Pepsi. And for years, he kept beckoning him to come, come with me, come on my team, I need you. You have the skills, you have it. Never, he kept saying no. So Steve Jobs did something, took the, man, the Pepsi manager up to a high building and they both overlooked the city. And while they were overlooking the city, Steve Jobs, with his hand folded, turned to the Pepsi manager and said, I see that you prefer to, to con, I see that you prefer and content to make sugar water. And that hit the Pepsi manager one time. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, I'm in. As a visionary, as a leader, as an eagle, the calculated risk. You see the potential in the person. You see the potential in your product because you believe in yourself, the employees and everyone. You're going to bring them all in. Bring them in. Create the cue in the leadership. Don't remain trapped. Don't remain there. You do not belong there at all. Come out of it and live your best creative life. Are you creating a cue in your leadership? Are you creating a cue in yourself? Back over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, Francois, for your very, very interactive speech. Within your speech, you give an opportunity to all the participants to speak on leadership. And the most important is that the cue in leadership you define, it was very inspiring. Thank you very much. Now one minute silence for the evaluation. 